Welcome to my cluttered garage, I'm really glad you're here. A place where we can laugh and talk in days of filled with cheer. The clouds of sun may come and go, but one thing is always clear. Welcome back, my friend, you know I'm really glad you're here. Yeah! Welcome back, my friends. It is true. I'm really glad you're here. Thanks for joining me this evening, and uh, I hope that uh, you had a great weekend, and I hope this week turns out really well. Thinking of those of you who may be in the path of the storm coming through, we're getting some rain a little bit today and some storms coming up this uh, later this week, uh, but uh, nothing like the folks in the south, and uh, thinking of all of you. So uh, anyway, uh, thank you again for being here. Hello, all. Uh, Chris, Kyle, Gary, Mitch, Mike, Derek, Edward, Mitch again. I'm reading it down through the comments. Uh, I hope that uh, I hope that you're uh, having a good day. Mitch, a tractor drives in. <laughs> a tractor drives down the road and turns into a field. Wait, <laughs> I, I ruined that one. A magical tractor drives down the road and turns into a field. Good one. Sorry, I ruined it. Anyway. Uh, Good one there, Mitch. Appreciate it. Uh, how's everybody doing tonight? I hope you're doing well. I know I said that. I already did. Uh, I'm reading the comments, though. So, uh, Brutal Bob is here. Hello, Brutal Bob. Margaret from southern New Jersey. Good to see you. And Bob Purr saying hi to Bob. Manisto. Great. Great, and uh, I'm seeing a, a hello to Phil from Peterson Farms. So I guess Phil's here. Oh yeah, there he is. Hey Phil, from Peterson Farms of Little Nashville. Good to see you. Hey, so tonight, uh, as you saw in the thumbnail, I want to talk about this John Deere tractor. And I know that a lot of the viewers here have Kubota compact, subcompact tractors. Hey John Ritter, uh, like I do. So I don't know how much John Deere experience there is here tonight but i'm hoping that there is some so let's jump right into it uh and talk about well about tonight's show i want to talk about this tractor that you saw on the thumbnail it is a john deere 4430 it is in my world ginormous uh i kind of feel like um jeremy clarkson if you've watched uh, clarkson farms on uh clarkson farm on amazon prime Good show, but he has this tractor that's rather large, perhaps too large, and that's the case with this thing parked out in the driveway. Uh, I'll tell you the backstory to that shortly. So let me call this uh, picture up, and I'll put that up in the corner so that you can see exactly what we're talking about. It's that right there, the John Deere 4430. It's like a 19, I think they were built in the 70s, 72 to 76. I've done a little bit of research on it. But uh, other than that, I don't know too much more about it. Hey, BTJ, uh, welcome. I'm glad that you love this channel. I appreciate it. Uh, once again, these live streams, I have fun doing these every Monday night, and I'm so happy that so many of you keep coming back and we have some new viewers. By the way, if you're new to the channel, if this is your first live stream, let us know in the comments because I have been talking about it on my regularly posted videos at the end. Uh, if you watch to the end, I'll often say, join us Monday evening. Uh, so if you're new to the live stream, welcome. And uh, well, I'm glad you're here, but I'd be interested to know if you are new to it. Uh, in typical fashion, when I look back at the analytics of every live stream, I lose subscribers on every single live stream. Uh, they have not helped the channel grow whatsoever, but when you watch my videos and you subscribe, obviously that is what makes the channel grow. So, uh, But it's funny, when I look at the analytics, every single live stream, negative one, negative two, negative three, um, usually not more than one to three, uh, but I guess people start to watch the live stream and say, this is not what I signed up for. I had some uh, criticism last week because I made that little intro uh, of me carrying the toolbox, which was a clip from my from my toolbox video. Kind of an inside joke. 
didn't go over well with a couple of people. They tuned out and said, what a stupid intro. Uh, maybe they said silly. Maybe they weren't that harsh. But anyway, uh, they didn't like it. So what can I say? But these live streams tend to be a little more, um, a little more, uh, you know, I want to, what's another word for intimate? I guess intimate sounds kind of creepy, but you know, they are, you know, the folks here in the live stream generally are uh, watching the channel more and more. Hey, uh, Ross, good eye there. Noticing the new Elvis behind the bird. Oh, you can't see it now because I put the, uh, because I put the tractor up there, but yep, there it is. Different album. Uh, thought I would just, um, you know, change things up just a bit. I'm going to leave that picture up there as we're as we're talking, cover up the bird and, and Elvi. Anyway, good to see you, Ross. Hope things are going well up there in Canada. Um, thank you, Mitch. <laughs> these, these live streams are much more personal. So that's a much better word than intimate. So thank you. Sometimes, you know, I, I'm not good on my feet thinking of words. I don't have the best vocabulary sometimes. Uh, yes, and he's still, this is family. We're all a good little family here, so <laughs> thank you. Mindful Homestead, Jack, good to see you. Dropping in for a while while I clean the chicken brooder. Very nice. Uh, Jack, as some of you may know, was one of my early guests uh, on the live stream. And Jack, I'm hoping that we'll have you back. I have this idea that I'd like to bring back a number of the early live stream people and maybe in a small group, and, uh, you know, welcome you back to the show. So I hope you could do that. Uh, anyway, check out the Mindful Homestead if you've not. So, and let's see what else here. Yes, close-knit, Jack. That's another another good word. Hey, Manisto, thanks very much. I often remind you, but sometimes forget. But if you enjoy the live stream, please click the thumbs up. I do very much appreciate it. It uh, means a lot. And I saw that there were some thumbs up even before we started tonight. So that is pretty fun. Um, I'm reading again. David White, good to see you. And, uh, hey, Gary, thank you for that reminder. First, I'm going to I'm gonna remind everybody this, uh, but as we've done in the past, which seems to work pretty well, if you have a question and you type your question, starting out with all caps question, then followed by the question, chances are I'll see it better than, than just typing it because the, the comments go by and I miss them. So that's, a, that's worked out pretty well to do it in this kind of format. Uh, because I just noticed uh, Gary questioning how many hours are on the John Deere. You know, that's great question. I I don't know. I don't remember. Um, it's kind of in rough shape, to be honest. Uh, the the hour meter is kind of falling out of the dash. It's got some cracks in the plastic dash. Runs fantastic, um, but uh, it does. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how many hours just yet. I'll get that information. Thank you, John. That's very kind super sticker uh i don't know the difference between a super sticker and a super chat but that's very kind and i thank you for that um so here's the backstory on this um john deere 4430 uh a and, and i'm trying to make a video about this it may take some time but i recorded a little bit yesterday when the tractor arrived here on the property but the reason i have it is because it ended up in the hands of a New York realtor, New York City realtor, like in Manhattan. Um, so uh, he sold a farm in this area, and he ended up with this tractor as part of the part of the deal. And he and I connected because the farm was local, and I just, uh, you know, I met him through that, uh, not through the transaction, but anyway, I, I was nosy. I reached out, and I'm like, what's going on with the farm? And that's how we met. Anyway, super, super nice guy, and we started chatting, and he said, can you help me with this tractor? I really, believe it or not, I really can't use it in New York City. So uh, we're going to sell the tractor, but I'm going to do a little bit of work to it. I'm 
I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Uh, you know, just some basic things, power washing, test it out. It runs fantastic. I mean, it, 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 uh, it may need a battery, although he was told the battery was new, but it wouldn't start yesterday. I put the charger on it today. It did start, but I didn't take the charger back off yet. So we'll take the charger off and see uh, if it'll start on its own after maybe 24 hours or so. That's minor, but uh, otherwise it, it does start up. It runs well. As you can see there, it's got the front end loader on it, which is a, a newer loader than the tractor itself. Uh, it's got this, I think, 84 inch bush hog, Woods bush hog. I know bush hog is the brand name, but Woods rotary cutter on the back end of it. Uh, it's got a cab with air conditioning that appears to not work. Uh, it's missing a door on the cab. The headliner is coming down. Uh, like I said earlier, the dashboard, it's plastic dashboard. It has cracks in it. Um, I mean, like chunks missing out of it. I don't think the gauges all work. Uh, but I did play with the gears a little bit. It's got like a, a, I guess it's called the shuttle shift. It has like, I don't know if it's like 16 gears. I haven't figured it out yet. But you go into, you push the lever all the way forward to third gear and then you can go to fourth without hitting the clutch at all. You just move the lever over and it, and it jumps forward. Same thing it has a reverse one and two. You can go faster or slower. But uh, it, it's uh, it's really transmission wise, it, it works really well and it it, it feels great. Uh, question from Anisto: the uh, horsepower. I don't know. I have to do some research on this thing, and 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 that's why I'm. That's why I'm uh, reaching out to you to see if you folks know anything about this machine. What's funny is today um, I was going, doesn't matter where I was going, but I was on the road. There's a lot of farms around here. And uh, there was a guy mowing alongside the road. And it was a tractor that looked just like this one. So I'm slowing down, driving around. I'm really slow. It was a 4440. What's the difference between a, this is not a joke. What's the difference between a 4430 and a 4440? I don't know. But anyway, I passed him and I saw, oh, 4440. Interesting. Looked exactly the same. And then I got down the road a little further. On the same road, there's another John Deere sitting in the, the barnyard there, 4440. So apparently a very uh, popular tractor. I'm reading now. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Mikey. Realtor. Did I say realtor? Did I say it wrong? Realtor. Realtor. Yeah, I got you. I got you. It's that South Jersey, you know, we, we you know, you know, what's funny is, you know, you, you guys know I'm from South Jersey and I, you know, you always think you don't have an accent, but then other people hear you and you do. And where we are, we kind of have a little bit of that. It's like, it's a Philadelphia, South Jersey accent, so it's kind of weird. We're, we, we're in a in a part of the state where a lot of people have like Southern accents. I don't even know where that comes from, but they they talk like they're from Alabama, um, and um, you know it's just an accent. I'm not saying anything disparaging about Alabama. What I'm saying is people seem to carry that accent around here. I don't know why. So we have that. It's like that with a bit of a Philadelphia accent if you know what that even is if, if you watch some clips of uh of uh i can't think of her name of her name on snl um darn great comedian and she's really funny she did the uh she did the impersonations of sarah palin anyway she does a, a philadelphia accent and she she really nails it we don't sound like that but you know the people in philadelphia do um yes Tractor says, thank you, Derek, for looking up tractor data, 125 horsepower. Boy, that's a lot. When you think about my little Kubota at 25 horsepower, I took it out in the field uh, earlier, and I mean, I, I don't even have a big field, um, and I turned the, the rotary mower on, the PTO worked great, but it's just so big. Uh, thank you, Gary. That's a quad range transmission. That sounds right. That makes sense. Um, it has a lot of, it has like three levers, two or three. One of them has a 16 on it. So I guess if you go like into eighth gear, high gear, that would be like 16th gear, I suppose. Um, but it works, it works really well. So 
Gary, I know you, uh, I believe you're a pretty big farmer, so maybe you know more about this. Uh, there you go. Thank you, Gary. 4440 is a newer version. That makes sense. Not much, uh, not much thinking there in the John Deere boardroom, was there? Like, oh, we're going to come out with a new tractor. What should we call it? Oh, uh, how about the 4440? It's the, after the 4430. Makes sense, though. I like it when they do simple things like that. Um, quad range gives you good road speed. Yeah, I didn't even go into high gear. I did take it on the road just to move it a little bit, and uh, it moves pretty good. You know, my, my little Kubota goes like a top speed of 14.7 miles per hour. Uh, but yeah, this thing, this thing moves. So pretty neat. A question from Chad, Purple Collar Life. Do you know if the rear tires are loaded with fluid in addition to wheel weights? I do not know that answer, Chad, but I suppose it'd be easy to find out if I just move it so that the valve stem is on the bottom and then squirt a little air out and we'll see. Uh, that would be a rather heavy machine, right? If those tires, I mean, look at the size of those things. If they were filled with fluid plus the wheel weights, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's heavy. And the ground, we've been getting rain, so the ground's getting soft around here. Thank you, Bob. 16 speed partial shuttle shift. Makes sense. Um, hey, Mark. Tuning in for a second. During work. Oh, okay. We won't tell your boss, but thank you. Thanks for being here. Uh, Gary, you got it. Tina Fey. I don't know why I couldn't think of her name. Anyway, she does a good South Philly accent. She does a lot of good accents, but anyway. If you're not sure what South Philly sounds like, look up Tina Fey, and uh, you'll, you'll hear it. And Chris, doing some doing some research for me. This I, I just got this here yesterday, so I haven't done anything on it yet too much. Um, am I lagging? I was there for a second, I suppose. 125 horsepower, four different trannies, eight speed, 16 partial power shift, shift, eight speed full power shift, 13 speed creeper. I guess those were options. So this one must be the 16 speed partial power shift because there is a little 16 on the, on the shifter. Very nice. And uh, thank you, Nick. As a matter of fact, this tractor is indeed for sale. That is the intention. Um, if you heard the beginning of the story, Nick, uh, this belongs to a realtor in New York City. And uh, I'm helping him kind of go over it, and it's going to be sold. So absolutely, if you want to come check it out, uh, send me a message, and we'll get together. I am, uh, oh, hey, Projects with Paul. Good to see you. Bob Purr's serial number. Good point. I will, I will look for that serial number. I don't know where it is. Probably stamped somewhere on the engine block or frame. And Gary, thank you. Four gears per range. Boy, that's a lot. Why, why do you need that many? You know, it's like my... Uh, like when when I had a bicycle and and I had a three speed when I was well I had no speeds on my bike but um, I one at one point I got a three speed the cool kids had a ten speed but you can get like a fifteen speed bike eighteen speed bike and I just don't get the need for all those speeds like especially like with what you're talking about here there there are four gears per range. So are there four ranges, and I feel my mind's, I'm going off here, okay, get ready. I'm thinking, like, is fourth gear in the first range the same thing as first gear in the fourth range, right? Think about it. If you have range number one, and you're in fourth gear, or if you're in Range number four in first gear, aren't they the same? I don't know. I don't know. I guess I don't need to answer that question, but that's just a little bit about how my brain works. Uh, thank you, Bob. Look on the rear housing. 
over the PTO. I will do that because, again, I plan to power wash it when we when I have a little time here because there's a lot of not – it's probably just hydraulic fluid that got on the back end and then dust sticks to it and it builds up over and over. Um, so that's good to know. Um, <laughs> Chris says if I put some MCG stickers on it, maybe John will buy it. Sorry, I'm getting some messages. I'm going to mute my phone here. There we go. Um, yeah. So, interesting. This has been a lot of good information. I really do appreciate it. I wish I had some video to run of it right now, but I didn't have a chance to upload anything or or create anything. But, um, like I said, it, it runs really well. You know, a lot of you who may not be familiar with older tractors. You know, a lot of us have these newer tractors that you just start right up and run, but all the older tractor, older diesels, you didn't just turn the key off to turn it, turn it off because it wasn't cutting anything off. Like a gasoline engine, when you turn the key off, it cuts all the electric off to the to the coil, the spark plugs, the the rotor and it and it shuts off. But the older diesels, you would turn the key off and it would keep running because there was you weren't cutting anything off. I guess it was a probably a manual fuel pump, so there was no way there was no way to cut off the fuel. So all these old tractors have like a choke up, uh, that you pull out, and what that does is it it cuts the fuel off uh, from the from the machine, and that was how you had to turn it off. You turn the key off, and then you pull this knob out, and it would choke out the fuel. But uh, you think about it. You know, again, there were no electronic components back then. If it was a manual fuel pump or mechanical fuel pump, uh, once it started, maybe the <laughs> maybe the guy that invented the diesel, I think his name was Diesel, he was like, it runs. And he's like, how do I turn it off? Oh, no. <laughs> it just runs and runs. So... So there's some. Uh, I'm not going to read these out loud. There's some. There's some uh, shade being thrown on John Deere's here tonight. Um, I did think when I was driving, and I saw those two tractors, and I thought, boy, John Deere does have the market on on farms. It looks like. I mean, everybody knows John Deere. That's just. It's just how it is. Um, so. Oh, that's interesting, Chris. That's how you turn a plane off, an airplane. Pull the mixture, and it cuts off. It's good to know if I'm ever in an airplane and I need to turn it off. Appreciate that. Very cool. Uh, do I have anything else to talk about? Uh, I mean, I do. Ha I always have plenty to talk about. We're going to go till 8 o'clock like we do. But uh, I didn't do any fun facts for tonight. I was uh, doing some work today. Actually, I'm off work, and I was doing some volunteer work. Uh, as you know, as I mentioned recently, as I mentioned only moments ago, uh, I'm in uh, southern New Jersey, and uh, the Delaware Valley Bluegrass Festival is held right here locally. It's like the 49th festival being held here. Um, it's not far from where I live, and we only went to it for the very first time a couple years ago. And we went, and it was fantastic. And my wife and I both said, oh, my gosh, you know, like this is the kind of, th sorry, <laughs> this is the kind of thing that you would travel, you know, you'd drive to another state, and you'd drive several hundred miles to see. And here it is practically literally in our backyard. Excuse me. Speaking of South Jersey and Philly, wah, wah. Uh, anyway, so this year, I volunteered. Uh, a friend of mine has been volunteering for years, and he said, "Do you want to help out?" So uh, we were out there today at the uh, at the fairgrounds, putting up fences and and partitions for the uh, for the buses of the performers and things like that. So that's what I was doing, and uh, would definitely encourage you that if you are near um, the Delaware Valley, specifically. Um, uh, near near Delaware itself. I mean, the, the fairgrounds are, are only about 10 minutes from the Delaware Memorial Bridge. Anyway, if you're near there, you should check out this Bluegrass Festival. If you like bluegrass, or even if you don't love bluegrass, but you 
kind of like it. Um, just to see talented musicians do their thing, just amazing. I mean, we, I, I, I'll be honest, I never listened to bluegrass, bluegrass music during the entire year. I like it. It's just not something that I like all the time. I I like it. I appreciate it, but uh, I just I just don't ever tune into it or listen to it. Um, but to go to the festival and see these musicians live on stage, um, just amazing. Uh, two years ago, they didn't have it last year because of COVID. They're having it this year with some, you know, cautionary uh, things in place. But um, it's mostly outdoors, so that's a good thing. But two years ago when we went, Ricky Skaggs performed. And if you know who Ricky Skaggs is, you know, he, he did some contemporary country. He was big in the 80s. But now he's really focused on bluegrass and just amazing, amazing talent. Enough about that. There's my little promotion for the Delaware Valley Bluegrass Festival. If you want more information about it, just go to your Google search engine or whatever search engine you use and search for Delaware Valley Bluegrass Festival. And uh, if you do go, uh, you might see me walking around somewhere. So it'd be fun to, to see you. Um, so that's fun, right? That wasn't even on any of my things to talk about. So uh, there's really not much else to talk about for that, other than reminding you to click the thumbs up if you just tuned in. Uh, it means a lot when you do that. So I do appreciate it. And what else do we have here? Not too much else there. Let's go back to the comments and see what we've missed here, if anything. And, hmm. That's interesting, Bob, that uh, your Coyote has 12 speeds. Very interesting. Um. I see a question. I see a couple questions. Uh, Robert is asking question. Suggestions of any channels for Massey Ferguson people? Uh, don't throw rocks. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, we all we all. I say all these tractors are are good. Uh, I f kind of feel like you can't go wrong. Um, I know that Mahindra is uh, coming up in the ranks. It's getting more popular. Uh, Coyote, um, they're certainly John Deere and Kubota in the compact subcompact market seem to have the uh, the advantage. You know, they're they're the the most familiar. Of course, John Deere again, everybody knows that name. But uh, from what I understand, Kubota and John Deere are the two main uh, contenders in the compact subcompact market. Uh, but I think all these other ones uh, are. Are really good. I looked at uh, a neighbor had me come over and look at his old Mahindra, old meaning I don't know, 10, 15 years old, and I was impressed with the quality of it. I really was. So anyway, uh, if you can help out Robert with any specific channels that you like that talk about Massey Ferguson, please put it in the comments and help out one of our viewers. And. Uh, Herb's asking a question about Sunset Park in Pennsylvania. No, did not hear anything about that. I don't know what that is at all. Uh, MJA, how much for the tractor? We're working on that. We're working on that. Um, I'm seeing a range, you know, of of values, and I was hoping that maybe you guys would say, "Hey, that tractor's worth, you know, thirty thousand dollars, or maybe not, or whatever it is," but. Uh, we have to determine that, so don't really have a price just yet. Uh, David, ah, thank you for bringing this up. <laughs> how's how's the shed? The shed has got the tractors parked in there. Now there's deck furniture in there, trash cans, baby stroller, toys. Like there's just stuff in there now and I need to work on the walls and I just haven't lumber prices are coming down so I do have an idea you know what I was thinking about um, I, I think I'm gonna just use wood studs on the walls and I was gonna use the t11 plywood rather than metal siding um, because I think 
I feel better about trimming out a window and a door with just wood plywood uh, siding on it. Uh, but my concern is if I run the plywood all the way to the to the bottom of the concrete, it's close to the ground and it's going to get splashing when it rains up against it, and that plywood would rot sooner than later. You know, had to keep it painted. So I was kind of thinking this. I was kind of thinking that maybe I'd run two courses of block, of cement block. They don't make them out of cinder anymore. They're not cinder block, cement block. But I was thinking if I ran two courses of block and then the plywood would come down to there, it'd be up off the ground, what, 16 inches? It would also match the garage that it's tied into. And I'm not experienced with block work, but I, I did, I've done it. I, I built some pillars in the basement before I put a, a you know, a board across. I guess it's not a header. I don't know what it's called when it's under the basement. doesn't matter. Anyway, I was thinking about doing that, just playing with some block work. Um, but I got so many other things going on here that I just, now that the floor is poured and I can park the tractor in there, that's a big step. But I'm a little slow, a little behind on that because we're um, working on getting quotes for a new septic system, which is uh, scary to think about because that can be expensive. Haven't gotten any numbers yet. But um, anyway, that's uh, not much happening with the shed, the short answer. Uh, Derek, <laughs> first I thought that you were serious, but he's saying 4430 seems good for the 4430. Yeah, I think it's worth a lot more than that. As old as it is, uh, yeah, right? MJA, you could buy it new for 23077 these things, though, you know, sometimes they're they're worth the same. <coughs> um, it's interesting. I was t talking to somebody today about pickup trucks, and I bought my pickup truck used. It was three years old when I bought it. Um, it's a 2014. I bought it in 2017. Um, it is worth. It's now worth more than what I paid for it. And that is unheard of in the used vehicle market. But if you check out the blue book on that truck, it's actually worth more than I paid for it. Uh, some people said trade it in. Then it, I guess it would be a good time to trade it in if I needed to. But I could trade it in. And then what do I have to do? Spend 50000 on another truck? So I'm just going to just gonna keep it. But things are kind of out of whack. Out of whack. Uh Thank you, David, about marine grade plywood last 20 years. That's good to know. That might be smart to do that. Um, metal on the bottom and plywood the rest of the way up. That's a good point. We're talking about the, the tractor shed now, for those of you who might not have caught that. Um, I was thinking of that, Phil, like if I could put something on the bottom for the first, instead of the, uh, like it's, I could put a treated, board on the bottom and then put the studs on top of that and then put something. I was even thinking about like hardy backer cement board. Would that be weird? Put that for the first part? I don't know, but uh, good point about doing it that way. Um, yeah. Yeah, there you go, Chad. Dealership bought your 2017 Jeep Wrangler from you last month for way more than you paid for it two years ago. Isn't that crazy? I mean, used cars usually, you know, the old the old uh, saying was you drive it off the lot and you lose 20% or whatever or the value, but it's it's going the other way and that's that's weird. So everything's like that, I think now, houses and and everything. So what can I say? Used vehicles, David White is saying that used vehicles our average 115% value. Hmm. Interesting. Um, all right. Thank you, Mitch. Hardy backer would mold. All right. Good to know. Won't be doing that. Plus, it deteriorates. Like I've, I've had scraps of that stuff. I use it on tile floors and things, uh, tile walls, uh, and I put it outside just to see what happens. And it does does kind of deteriorate and doesn't have any structural has no structural integrity you know it's just it's a backer so that's uh 
that's what I have to say about that. Uh, I want to do a sticker giveaway tonight, as we do every Monday night. And that'll be a fun thing to do. So we're going to do that shortly. But we'll just keep on reading some comments for the moment. And, uh, yeah, conversations about vehicles right now. There's a chip shortage right now. Used cars will be up for a little while. Uh, it's amazing, these shortages. There's been There have been shortages of things. I can't even remember what it was, but uh, I was surprised by some of the shortages and how they just affect everything down the line. Um, I'm trying to think of... There was something... There was a product that... Uh, I can't even think of it. I'm sorry. But anyway, there was it was being made, was it in the Philippines or somewhere where the heat, there's incredible heat wave, and they had to shut down the factories because people just couldn't work. It was so tremendously hot. So there were there was a supply chain um, shortage for sure. So let me look at my, uh, i got to click away, and I lose your comments. Not, I don't lose them, but they go to a different screen to see if I have anything else. Uh, in my little list here of things to talk about. So that was a great, by the way, that was a great conversation. Was it last week when we talked about using non-ethanol fuel? And uh, I had bought the uh, airplane aviation fuel, and I put that in my um, in my generator. Uh, but that, that was a good conversation. I appreciate it. It was fun. Okay. Yep, J and J block is better, meaning for the for the bottom. Yeah, just don't know, just don't know. So, you guys want to do a sticker giveaway? Would this be a good time? It's seven forty, and that uh, takes a little bit of time to do that. So that would be fun to to do that. If you think I'm looking down at my phone, hey, to talking to myself. Didn't mean to do that. Anyway. Let's do uh, let's do a sticker giveaway. If you've not participated in the past, here's how it works. So I'm going to give you a phrase that you're going to type in the comments. This is for the live viewers. You're going to type this phrase in the comments, and then I have a comment picker. It's going to go through, and it's going to choose a random winner for the uh, for the stickers. So you only need to enter once. If you enter more than one time. Uh, it'll kick out all the other entries, so only need to enter at one time. If you uh, have won stickers in the past, please do not participate because we want to give everybody an equal chance to win. So you are disqualified if you won stickers in the past. Also, uh, the winner must be from the United States or Canada. Uh, I think that is all I have to say about that. Uh, I see some people in here typing hashtags trying to get a jump on it. I'm sorry, but that is not the hashtag for tonight's show. I thought about it, and I thought, nah, that's too easy. People will guess that. So I didn't do it. But anyway, you'll see this, the, the screen come up, and then we will uh, we'll draw randomly. We'll see how many entries we can get. We've got uh, about 60 people watching right now, which is a nice number. Uh, the numbers have been growing on the live streams, even though I lose subscribers for whatever reason. On live streams, but yet more people watch. You know, we, we used to get like 35, 40 people watching. Now we got almost 60. So that's fun. Good times. Appreciate it. Well, let's play some music. So here's the uh, here's the phrase. You guys were close, but I did. I'd, I thought I'd mix it up a little bit. So you're gonna type in hashtag JD. 4430, and you'll win all three of these vinyl stickers. I'll get rid of this. Oops. There's the whole thing. There we go. So we have five entries. So I'm going to let this go for a little while. And you guys can enter in the comments. Hashtag JD 
I see a lot of <laughs> I see a lot of hashtags that uh, of different words, big green and and uh, dear for oh for you guys who have won in the past, you're still entering. That's funny, but entering a different name so it won't come up. Yeah, <laughs> where is John? John was here, right? But he left. So everybody has an equal chance to win here. We used to do this where it would be the first person that I saw with the correct answer that would come up. So this is really fun that, that we have this, this comment picker that uh, picks randomly. There are fewer entries tonight. You have a better chance to win. We usually get like 30 entries. We're only up to 20 right now. Probably because so many people have won. Hey, Tin Barn, you're wearing your MCG shirt right now. That's fun. Very fun. Notice tonight, by the way, I meant to tell you, I'm wearing my green shirt, green background, because we're talking about John Deere. So I thought I'd go for the whole mood here. So that's fun. If you are interested in one of these shirts, you can check out some of my products at shopmcg.com. Um, got some shirts on there, a mug, some stickers that you could pay for, but you might just win them. All right, let's draw. Got 22 entries. I think that's enough time for people to enter who would have wanted to enter. So here we go. I don't have a drum roll here, but that's all right. And bingo. There we go. Who's going to win the stickers tonight? Um, it's coming up. Coming up. Brutal Bob. Congratulations, Brutal Bob. The winner of tonight's stickers. Now, part of the uh, thing I have to tell you here is what you need to do is email me at this address. The email address is contactmcgtv at gmail.com. Shoot me an email and let me know your name and mailing address, postal address, and let me know that you won the stickers tonight. And, uh, we'll match everything up, make sure it's legitimate, and um, send that email to contactmcgtv at gmail.com. If you lose the email address or forget what it is, go to my About section on my YouTube page, and within that About section, you can get the email address from there. So congratulations, Brutal Bob. Uh, very fun. Let's remove that now. There we go. That's fun. And again, I say this all the time, I just love that name, Brutal Bob. Uh, I think it's a good name. I don't know. I I, I, I might have mentioned this earlier, but I have talked about this several times in the past. Please look through these comments and click on these names. A lot of these people watching tonight also have really good YouTube channels. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the Mindful Homestead, Jack was on here earlier. Jack was one of my live stream guests, also has a great channel. Uh, Gord, good to see you from GP Outdoors. Um, GP Outdoors was uh, a great channel that really inspired me to not only buy my Kubota B2601, but also to make some content. So thank you for that, Gord. That really uh, uh, means a lot. And I think you guys probably all know about GP Outdoors. It's a, a great channel. has just grown tremendously, and uh, GP puts out great content. I like, Gord, that you're... You're putting out some other content. Um, I know that your your video about uh, the um, the wireless keyless entry of your truck. You know, you explained that your truck got stolen and how that happens. Really interesting video, and I think it's one of your top videos. Really, nothing to do with outdoors or firewood or anything else that you do, but just such a great job. So, and good night. <laughs> I see you're heading out. I know it's late. Uh, in some places for folks who are watching. But um, again, 
look at look at these channels. I don't want to start naming them all off because they're all so great, uh, but a lot of good channels here. So please go back and check out these channels, and um, let me know you know what you'd like to see from my channel, uh, the live streams. I'm always looking for suggestions of people to join. I do have a couple people that uh, are not secured yet as far as a date, but very interested in joining as a live stream guest. And I think you'll be very happy with uh, with those guests. If you have uh, any other suggestions, leave it in the comments. And I do appreciate that. Um, and then uh, any any content that you'd like to see, uh, I'm hoping to run the wood chipper soon. You know, we had that tree cut down a long time ago, um, but uh, it's just been busy, and now it's getting wet, and the the tree, you know, the leaves have dried up and started to fall off, so that makes it easier for for chipping. Um, but I'm hoping to get some some wood chipper content out there pretty soon, especially now that the the heat wave is finally supposed to break. This heat wave broke like three times in the past. They kept saying that the heat wave is going to end next week, and then it just keeps coming back and back. So this week it's supposed to break again, although I'm going to be too busy. But fall's coming, so we'll be able to do some things with that. So uh, again, with the with the tractor, the 4430, I really appreciate your input on that. And, of course, I'm going to be doing some research as well on that, again, cleaning it up some. And... Um, We'll see where where that goes, but uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of big to do anything with around my property. Um, I would like to uh, I'd like to see how powerful that front end loader is. It's very slow compared to my little Kubota, but I bet you it has quite a bit of power behind it uh, for sure. So that again, if you have not been here for the whole live stream, you'll see the. John Deere 4430 that we we're talking about here in that corner. The uh, the mower on the back, the uh, Woods rotary mower, it's missing that single wheel that spins around. So that, I don't know how easy it would be to get one of those and replace that. Uh, probably not terribly difficult, but apparently the person who had it before was using it with no wheel on the back. They would just kind of level that thing out with a three-point hitch and just kind of let it ride that way, which doesn't work great because if you hit a dip or whatever you're going to dig into the ground but anyway it's a it's really a nice mower really smooth but it's missing that back wheel so it must have fell off and was never found again sort of like my little linchpins that I lost and my spacers on my finished mower I still look when I go in that area where where the wheel fell off I'm like these spacers have to be there can't find them could try it with a metal detector but I just haven't haven't done that so don't know. Uh, again, a lot of questions talking to each other. So, hey, Money Pit Homestead. I can't guess who it is because usually when I say, I know one of you is Lisa, and it's like, oh, wrong person when I say, hi, Lisa. Nope. Anyway. You were just out weed eating. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's a strange, uh, that's one of my least favorite things to do is to run the weed whacker slash weed eater slash string trimmer. Uh, I kind of hate it, but once I start it, I just keep going and do as much as I can. So, oh, sorry. Oh, uh, yeah, Water said, will there be a 4430 video? I'm hoping so. I recorded some uh, when, it, when it came over yesterday, when the tractor came here. Um, just don't know quite yet, but I do want to... I was thinking I would do a, uh, a will it start video like Hank does, but it starts. So there's no... <laughs> that'd be a quick, boring video. Will it start? Yeah, it will. Uh, so, Margaret, we, did you tune out for a while? Stickers, we did it. We gave the stickers away. We had a winner. Brutal Bob won the stickers tonight. So, you missed it, my friend. I'm looking here... Ben is looking to buy a 4430 with a loader. Well, look what we have right here, Ben. A 4430 with a loader. And the rotary mower, if you want it, as well. So, and it's for sale. If you missed that earlier, it is for sale. So, uh, I 
Oh yeah, Money Pit talking about the the weed whacking. How much we kind of hate it. Do your hands vibrate? Like I hate that part. That, no matter what, when I when I, I even have this electric string trimmer now, which is a little less vibration than the than the gas powered one, but still, when I when I come in, my hands are like like this from running that thing. They're numb and it's probably not good for you. So there's an interesting comment that the 4430, oh, the hydraulic is much weaker than the 40 series. Maybe that's why they came out with the 4440 after the 4430. Maybe it was just an improvement on that. So anyway, with that. So what else? I think we're going to wrap up here early tonight. Not a whole lot to talk about, but I do appreciate your uh, uh, I appreciate your comments. And uh, MJA was talking about Goodworks tractors. Yep. I was thinking about that. Uh, I know that he's does a lot of John Deere stuff, and he may have some information to share about it. Uh, and uh, Court Courtney, I think his name is. Yep, I think so. But uh, oh, John Ritter just got here. Had to film a video for school. Well, John, I'm sorry, but. <laughs> Obviously, you didn't win the stickers tonight because you didn't enter. But anyway, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Doing some video for school. Are you back to school? Are you are you back to teaching? Um, I know that a lot of the schools are meeting in person this year, and I hope that they can keep that up. Uh, yeah, anyway. John missed the sticker draw. Yep, you and Margaret both. But Margaret, you won already, so you just like to, you just like to, be in the drawing anyway. But I, I get it. Uh, J and J, have a good night. Thanks very much for, for being here with us, tonight. Appreciate it so much. Uh, I'm gonna click off this uh, picture here. There you go, because we don't need that up in the background the whole time. Anyway, stay tuned. See what happens with this. Um, could be interesting. I might do some video of the. I don't know if I would do anything with the Bluegrass Festival. I might. You know, who knows? I did something with the fair. That was fun. Um, so I don't know. But things are just busy right now. I haven't put any content for a week, and I apologize for that. But I like to, I like my content to be watchable and somewhat enjoyable, and I don't want to just put it out for the sake of putting out content. So that's what I love about these live streams is that we get to get together. Get to, get to, we get to, I said that right. It just sounded funny. We get to get together. Funny. Get to get together. I like that. Anyway, uh, I do uh, hope to put out something soon and see you with that. I'm trying to... I, I sound lost right now because I'm clicking around. You got all these comments coming in. I'm trying not to miss anything. But uh, when I click on something else, the comments go away, and it's it's tough with that. So at any rate going to wrap it up. We are just about at the one hour mark and lots of fun. I can't thank you enough for, for coming here every Monday night. Uh, I do think it's great to start our week out together like this. It means a lot to me and uh, I, I do love the community that we've, we've kind of formed here together. You folks are great and um, so much fun to chat with you here and in the comments and again, maybe I, I'm talking about doing uh, uh, a viewer collaboration live stream like we've done in the past. Maybe next week if we have some time, we'll get some of you to come on screen with us and chat. That would be a lot of fun, especially with the new people that are here. And what we do is we share the link to join the live stream and you actually come on camera and we chat together. So that's fun. So if you're a new viewer here, stay tuned and we'll see what happens with that. With that, I'm going to say good night. Thank you again for being here, and I hope you have a great week, and I really look forward to seeing you next time.